All right, what's up, everybody? Thanks for coming back to my channel. I need to upload more videos. I'm well aware of that. But man, when you get older, time just flies. And it's just like, how do you have time to do all this stuff? <laughs> Anyways, here's my next project. All right, today I am working from home in the driveway and in the garage. I was asked by a friend in Inglewood, Florida to do a uh, chair painting. So I took this old chair that my friend and neighbor Harry dropped off for me. He found it driving around. So shout out to Harry. Um, so this is for a charity event, hence the word chair. That's why I'm painting a chair. So here's some supplies I got. Sandpaper sponge to sand this down, some alcohol cleaner in a rag, and some old spray paint that I'm trying to use up and get rid of. So this is a great time to do it. So take some sandpaper or a scotch bright pad or a sanding block like this. Basically, basically a sponge with some sandpaper on the outer sides. I think it's like four to six hundred grit, something like that. So I'm just scuffing up any spots where there's loose paint because I want to sand that down and get it as smooth as I can so that doesn't show through my beautiful paint job that's coming up. And that takes about 20 minutes once I'm done sanding that down and feel pretty confident the way it is. Then I'll spray this with some alcohol and a rag and clean it up. You got to get all that excess paint that you just sanded down. You got to get all that off so that your new paint sticks nice. There you go. So I could prime this if I wanted, but I'm just trying to use what I got. So instead of buying some primer, I'm using this paint and primer mix, and I'm just uh, painting straight over the black. So the idea is for the back of this chair to resemble a sunset sky. So I'm starting with some yellow, and I'm gonna fade that into some orange at the top. So it looks like a really nice bright sunset. This is Rust-Oleum in the can that says 2X on it. It's a very high pressure paint. Um, it's really just good for painting solid objects. Not really good for artistic stuff, but I'm just trying to use it up, so. The legs of this chair, I am just painting a, uh, basically a brown wood color. So I've got a dark spray paint brown in one hand and a lighter brown in the other hand, and I'm just going back and forth, spraying the two colors over top of one another until I feel like it's got kind of a natural look. So now I'm going to take some white paint and I'm going to go ahead and hit it right here at the bottom in the middle. And that's going to kind of resemble where the sun would be in the sunset. And it's pretty much all I'm going to do for the back portion of this chair. So I'm going to wipe all this over spray off because it kind of lands like a powdery texture. So you want to make sure that's clean. So the seat portion of this chair is going to look like beach water uh, washing up onto the sandy beach. And this is the sandy beach coming in with the beige paint. Just kind of making this up as I go. I just had a little bit of a vision in my head and I'm just kind of executing it little by little. So before I get any farther, I'm going to um, save myself uh, the worry about getting paint where it doesn't need to go and I'm just going to tape up the bottom of each of these posts. Try to knock this out real quick. So I figured it'd be easier than just trying to paint really slow, carefully around the bottom. So I just tape them up and go for it. So these are the watercolors. I got a, two different shades of this blue. One's more of a turquoise and one's more of a, um, I don't know, just like a, a darker blue. So I'm painting that on towards the back portion of the base of this chair because as the water crashes up onto the beach towards the front of the seat, I want it to be a little bit lighter and white. So all the darker blue goes in the back. <laughs> so I get about this far and then I'm going to mix with a two inch brush here some white and that same color blue. Give myself like a baby blue color. And I'm just going to paint in a nice thick line of that. Of 
putting this paint on rather thick um, to cover up any little imperfections in this old chair. So then I wash that brush out and while it's still wet from washing out, I'll come back and I'll use that same brush and blend these colors in, make a little bit more of a smooth transition. And then I'll come back with that turquoise and just put a little bit lighter blue here at the front. All right, then without washing the brush out, there's still some blue in there. I just dip it right in this beige, and then I'm gonna paint this section. And this section is gonna basically be the wet sand where the water was, and now it's kind of receding out. It leaves that, that sort of visible area that's a little bit darker and has a kind of a wet look to it. So you'll see some of that beach sand through that little, little bit of water that's left over from that wave. That's why I'm painting this beige in here. And then the leading edge of almost all waves, I guess any size really, um, even a small little wave like this is going to have a white foamy bubbly edge to it. So that's what I'm doing here. Now if you've seen a wave come in and wash back out, you'll, you'll notice that it has these like little wispy, squiggly, foamy bubble lines, you know, just from the, the water being disturbed. So that's what I'm painting here. It kind of looks like lightning going up into the sky, but it's really just some um, white foamy trails left from the momentum of the waves splashing in and out. There's really no one way to do it. <clears throat> so then I take solid white and a little bit of a different brush, and I create a very defined front leading edge to this wave. Now when I say wave, it's not really a wave, like a surfing wave, obviously. This is just like off of Mexico on a real calm day, the water is just gently like washing up onto the sand. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. So just using some of this white and kind of fading it out, fading it into the blue here. And then here in front of the water where the wet spot was that I would was painting, I'll just fade that out as well so it still looks like there's a little bit of water left over that's kind of trickling back out as the wave recedes. And then of course you gotta have the little squigglies there too. These take a while, these, these look easy but they're actually quite challenging to make realistic and I still haven't quite grasped it yet but I'm doing these on a regular basis so I feel like I'm getting a little bit better at them but like I said, this is just a quick painting, um, so I'm just doing what I can with the time given. Okay, so then underneath that leading foamy bubbly edge, I'm just taking some blue and some of that beige, mixing it together into this kind of like darker grayish blue color, and I'm just going to put that right in front of the foamy edge here, and that just kind of gives like a little bit of a shadow, so it looks like there's some depth to this water. Then I'm going to mix some blue and some white together on this lid of this container that I keep my paint in. I use these a lot to, to mix my little custom colors if it's just little bits at a time. And then I let it dry and then peel all that paint off in a couple days after and it's a nice clean lid again. So I'm taking some of this blue paint and I'm kind of making, making it look like water splashing around the posts of the back of this chair as it goes into the water. It's kind of look like it's, it's basically rising up out of the water. And what beach painting would be complete without something in the sand, right? So footprints, somebody wrote their name in the sand or whatever, a heart. So kind of what I'm doing here is I'm doing that effect and I'm using some brown mixed with beige that's already on the chair. And just making it look like some lettering was written in the sand with somebody's hand or foot or a stick or a shovel or whatever. So I'm doing, I love Inglewood. This chair is going to an event down in Inglewood. Thought it only made sense to make it Inglewood themed. If you've never been to Inglewood, Florida, it's a little town I grew up in. It's actually, I think it's one of the only towns on the west coast of Florida in this general area that still feels somewhat like it did back in the 80s and 90s. Um, it's a very small town vibe. 
it's not like a big touristy city like Sarasota. It's even smaller and has less of a touristy vibe than Bradenton. Um, it's just kind of like old Florida mixed with new Florida, um, but the new Florida hasn't completely taken over the town like in a lot of areas around here. Um, so that's why I love Inglewood. Plus I grew up there, so I just can relate to it because I think even though I live in Alabama. Okay, so over here next to the writing, I'm doing two shark's teeth and a sand dollar. Sand dollar is basically like a starfish um, type of sea creature. It's just round and it's flat. And when you're out at the sandbar in the boats, what we used to do when I was a kid, you can see them down on the sand by your feet, you pick them up, you turn them upside down, and you can skip them, skip them across the top of the water like a stone. I'm sure the sand dollars don't enjoy it, but uh, when you're a little kid, it's a lot of fun. So the person who wrote I Love Inglewood also left their footprints here. I mean, footprints and beach sand just kind of go together. All right, so just gonna peel this tape. Top it off with my signature. Always sign your artwork. No excuses to sign your artwork. All right, so I'm trying to get rid of some clear coat in this can, so I figured this is a good time to use it. So I'm gonna take this and just spray it over the whole base seat area of this chair, and then those vertical back rest posts, just in case somebody does sit on this, they want to be well protected. So after that, I'm gonna do. Three coats of polycrylic. Put this down pretty heavy. Um, it dries crystal clear, nice and shiny. Um, you gotta be careful though when you're going around areas like this right here. You can see right there where some of that clear coat will just kind of pull up and cuddle up in the corners and tight little cracks, and uh, you gotta make sure that's all brushed out before it dries. So here is a walk down memory lane. This is the beginning. A reminder of how it did look when I started. Again, shout out to Harry for grabbing his chair for me. I was a little concerned I wasn't getting the project done, but I did thanks to his help. So here is the final product. Got that kind of brown look to make it look like it was an, you know, a shellac brown wooden chair. And the real RC part starts at the top here. We're gonna make this thing match the octopus on the trailer behind it. Bright, bright orange. I'm all about bright colors. I like to paint real life things, but I like to make them brighter and appear more vibrant than they would in real life. Now this thing's got a nice glossy finish to it. Um, pretty happy with how this turned out. Kind of like the way the water's splashing around those posts from the backrest. Got the little shark's teeth here. Inglewood Beach is loaded with shark's teeth, so gotta pop those in there. So thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. Try to make these videos as short as I can, but you know I gotta do what I got. I gotta do. So please like and subscribe, share this video. I'll be uploading some more here soon. I got a whole list of projects. To do, so I figured I might as well film them and share them with you all. Like and subscribe. Catch me on Instagram at Matt McAllister. Peace.